Welcome to Digital Asset News. We take top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down into bite-sized pieces. Today, we're going to go over three super important things. The first one is all about how much time you're going to actually have to cash out when the bull run hits. Second thing are psychological factors and how you will fail if you don't do these certain things. And lastly, we're going to talk about exit strategies and limit orders. These are, this is the most important aspect of this video, so make sure you watch this video all the way to the end. And a quick note, this is going to be an update to the Born Basics. It is August 5th, 2020, and we need to go over a couple things, which is the different exchanges and different on-ramps and off-ramps that we need to hit so we can be successful. How much time do we really have during a parabolic bull run? So let's take a look at that right now. Okay, so we have our overall chart here. This is a Bitcoin chart going for about seven years, from July 2013 to January 2020. All right, so the question is, how long do we have for a particular parabolic bull run? Because as you can see here, this is a very long line of nothingness for years. Those are called the bear markets, and they suck, and it's been a big pain. But what happens when we get over here? How much time do we really have uh, when this thing goes parabolic, which means it goes straight up. Let's take a look. So if we want to take a look at the start, that'd be around November 12th, 2017 for this last parabolic bull run. Now, some people might put it a little bit more to the right, some people might put it a little more to the left, but let's just say it starts around here. The price was $5,870 and the market cap was 97 billion. So remember, this is November 12th, 2017. So what happens when it hits the top and how much time was that? So we take a look at November 12th to December 17th. It went from around a little less than 6,000 all the way up to almost $20,000 in 30 days. Amazing. So really when we look at these types of things, we're like, wow, we've got a month to decide where's the top and how much we're gonna take and how much psychologically we can actually handle and make sure that we get rid of or sell out our positions. Because if not, it's very easy to go, well, it was 6,000 down here and now it's 15, it'll go up. Well, now it's 18, it'll go up. Now it's 20, it'll go up. No, oh, it went down to 18, ah, it'll go back up to 20. Oh, it went to 16, eh, I'm sure it'll go back up. What, 15,000, see where I'm going with this? You have to be set and ready to pull the trigger because if not, you will be a bag holder like uh, me and Mr. B. So that's how it goes. So moving forward, what's going to happen if you don't? There's this thing called a slow burn. That's what I call it anyhow. And there's just this big descending, I guess it just goes down, down the, the toilet. And you're just looking at like two months when you're kind of hoping and praying that it kind of goes up. And sometimes it does go up a little bit. And you're like, oh, okay, it'll go back up to the original amount. And it just keeps slipping and slipping and slipping. So from December 17th, 2017 to February 5th, now you're wrecked. You went from essentially about 6,000. You could have sold out at 20 and now you're back down to 6,000 again. And it all happens in a very short amount of time. And the problem then, then the, the problem continues on because as time moves forward, you can drop down to like what we did in 2019, which was 5,000, then 4,000, then 3,000. So even if you got in at a pretty low amount over here at 6,000, you still got wrecked over here. So you must be prepared to pull that trigger. All right, let's take a look one other type. So let's take a look at XRP. Here's the overall uh, type of uh, market. You can see this, there is nothing going on. I mean, little blips here and there. Then there is this Mount Everest parabolic um, spike. So when did that happen and how much time do we have? So if we take a look at this, it's gonna start uh, December 9th, 2017. That makes sense, right? Very base of Mount Everest. So okay, so we go from December 9th, 2017 to and this is the end point. We're only looking at January 5th, 2018. Again, roughly about a month, give or take a couple days. You've got a month to decide. It goes from 25 cents to $3.26. So all this time that you have toiled and waited and hodled, all this comes down to 30 days. 30 days. Are you sure that you can pull the trigger? Are you sure? A lot of people say they can, and then when it comes down to it, same thing. They just get caught up like, ah, it'll go back up, or it'll go even up, it'll go even higher. Because, you know, there's this, there's these bars and this technical analysis that says that 
you know, it's uh, it's going to go up and I think it's going to look, I don't know what to tell you about technical analysis. I mean, I'm sure it's great for some people. It doesn't work for everybody. Um, and I'm just going to tell you that you need to have a plan of action. If you don't have a plan, if you, if you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. Now let's take a look. So this is again another what we call a slow burn. So you've got two months just to kind of look at everything, look at all your profits get eaten away. Down and up and down and up, and maybe you make the right decision, maybe you don't, maybe you, you sell at the top of this descending channel, maybe you sell down here, then it goes up again, you kick yourself, then it goes down, it goes up, goes up. So if you do something like this, it's gonna be very painful for you. I can tell you from experience. And then what happens after this slow burn? You're in a wasteland. And you're in a wasteland for years. What I mean by that is you're essentially just walking the wasteland, just out there, just hoping for the next bull run, just waiting for years. There's nothing in sight, just your bags as you're holding them, trudging along in a never-ending pit of doom and despair. Oh, it's not that bad, but it does suck, let me tell you that. So, what do you do? What can you do to avoid this? It's very simple, my friends. Take it from me. Take it from experience. You can learn from mistakes, but they don't have to be your mistakes. Here's what we need. It's called an exit strategy and limit orders. So, we've already talked about exit strategies, and I've actually uh, revised mine. And this is what we're going to go over next as far as the things that we need to do. So, let's break into that. So here we have our, what I call my two Bitcoin exit strategy. Let's just say, for example, I had two Bitcoin. And I don't, by the way, but let's say I did have two Bitcoin. Um, what you're going to want to do is just kind of think to yourself, okay, where do I think Bitcoin is going to sell off at, right? Or where do, or how high or how low do I think it's going to go? So I believe it's going to go up to 250,000 and above over the years. Okay, I don't know when. I mean, I have an idea of I think when, and there's different videos I talk about that, but that's not for here. We just want to figure out an exit strategy. So let's just say, let's say that within the realm of reason, it is January 10th, 2020, I think we can get to the all-time high back two years ago, which was around 20,000, okay? So I learned this from Mr. BXRP, and he said that if you are looking for round numbers to sell off at, it's not really a you can do that, it's fine, just not a great strategy because everybody's going to do that and there's only so many sell orders that the exchanges can fill, I mean, within reason. Now maybe during a parabolic bull run, everything gets filled, but you want to make sure that your orders are filled, so when you put it in at $20,000, that someone's going to say, I want to buy that, or multiple people, I want to buy that for $20,000. Or you can do what is a pretty good example here. Um, is instead of going for round numbers, mix it up a little bit because a lot of people are, you know, pretty basic. They're going to go for the 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, just round numbers because it's super simple. Why don't you just do this? Instead of saying, well, I think it's going to be at 20,000, just back it off a little bit and go for these odd numbers. So maybe 19,902, 19,876, or whatever it is. It doesn't matter what it is, but around the number where you think, that Bitcoin might sell off. So for me, I think, okay, I think that we're gonna hit an all-time high again. It, it should be uh, super, uh, not simple, but attainable. So I'm gonna sell 10%. So 10% of my two Bitcoins, that would be 0 0.2 Bitcoins. And what I'm gonna have left is 1.8. Makes sense, right? 2.0 and a 0 0.2 is 1.8, all right? If it's at 20,000 and I sell 0 0.2 or 10%, I'm gonna get $4,000, fantastic. Made some profit, everybody's happy, right? Now I'm not gonna sell until it gets to around 50,000. Again, I'm gonna back it off a little bit, maybe 49,980. I'm gonna sell 10% of that. So 10% of 1.8 is 0 0.18. And I'm gonna have 1.62 Bitcoin remaining. So 1.8 minus 0 0.18 equals 1.62. So I'm, if I'm gonna sell 0 0.18, times 50 grand, I'm gonna make 9,000. Fantastic, everything's good. And I just keep going down the list. But what I want you to, to be aware of, I never sell everything. Because who knows where it could go and you don't wanna kick yourself later, right? So you see here at the end, I still have a little more than, than a half of Bitcoin. I got 0 0.6. So let's say that at some point, Bitcoin goes to half a million dollars. Okay, I'm not kicking myself for selling over here, but 
I have stay regimented. I can pull the trigger. I know what's here. I don't have to deal with the psychological factors of, well, should I wait? I know I said this number. Maybe I should. No. It's set in stone. Done. Done dealing. And if you want to make it even easier, here's another, another example. Um, I just said 0.25 all the way down instead of, you know, making uh, different numbers. So I'm going to sell a quarter when it hits 20,000, a quarter when it gets 50, a quarter when it gets 80, so on and so forth. And you can see that it's the total is eh, pretty close, pretty close, right? But the total is uh, not too shabby and hopefully make out pretty well. So that's one example. Let's take a look at the XRP exit strategy. So same type of thing, I believe, and actually I, I change this a little bit. So the old time, all time high, 2017 that we just talked about, was $3.40. So I'm gonna sell at 318. Okay, let's say I have 30,000 XRP, which I don't, but uh, it'd be nice if I did. So I'm gonna sell 5%. 5% 5 of 30,000 is 1,500. So if I sell 1,500 at $3.18, I'm gonna make a profit of 4,500 bucks. Great, I still got 28,500. Now I'm gonna wait till it gets to around 10. I'm gonna sell at 992. See where I'm going with this? I'm gonna sell 10%, which is gonna be about <clears throat> 2,850, and I have 25,000 left, and I'm gonna make 28,500. Pretty good day. Not too bad for just sitting around doing nothing. And then 19, and then 29, 49, 74, 99. Who knows what makes that? But I want you guys to notice again, I never run out. I still got a little bit left in the tank. Because who knows? We don't know. Now, if you're a Bitcoin maximalist, you think I'm crazy. And if you're an XRP maximalist, you still think I'm crazy. Because either or, you're like, ah, that coin will never happen because XRP and Bitcoin and Ethereum and Tomato Coin are awesome. I don't care. You have your whatever you think is awesome. Great. Have fun. I'm not here to um, change the world. I'm here to make a profit. And uh, yeah, so if it changes the world in the process, so much the better. But I will tell you this, I'm going to root for every type of cryptocurrency and digital asset out there because what's good for one is good for all. And when the water comes into the harbor, all the ships rise and I'm okay with that. So that is our first part of our strategy. The second part is, well, how do I make sure I pull the trigger? Because you could still be like, you know what? I know it's on my sheet, which is on my computer, but ah, I think it'll still go up. And you could very well do that. So here's the second piece of the puzzle. Okay, everybody, before we move on, uh, we're doing an update. This is uh, August 5th, 2020. I need to make mention of some different changes to the criteria of the bull market strategy. So the first thing, we're going to go into Coinbase and Coinbase Pro and talk about limit orders and stop orders and all those different things, which is you know great. It's gonna be a, a game changer for you. But the thing is, is that um, as the bull run comes about, there is going to be a lot of people that are trying to uh, use these different exchanges as off ramps or on ramps or whatever else because of all the FOMO. So what you have to be sure of is that you have as many on ramps and off ramps as you possibly can get your hands on. So what I'm talking about is if I need to sell my Bitcoin, my XRP, my Ethereum or whatever else it is, if, it, if I just have Coinbase, it's not gonna work out so hot for me because there has been different uh, issues with outages and uh, capacity, and the same thing has happened with Binance. I remember when I was around in 2017, you, people were selling their Binance accounts with zero cryptocurrency in them for hundreds and sometimes even thousands of dollars just to get the chance to buy the cryptocurrency. So that was, you know, three years ago when everybody bought things on vapor. There's really nothing there. It was just white papers and hopes and dreams. So if we start to look about what's happening right now with actual main nets and projects and um, different these different products that actually have uh, things going down the pipe where they actually have partnerships, there's going to be a lot of selling and a lot of uh, congestion for these different exchanges. So here's what I recommend. So you can use Coinbase and Coinbase Pro. I've talked about how I'm not a big fan of them because of the different outages that they had. So I need you to make aware or be aware that to go to other exchanges. So I put together a list and it's going to be in the description of every one of my videos, including this video. It's going to be a link right here. And when you click on that link, it's going to go to the exchange and wallet fees and overview. And what this is, is a Google spreadsheet and it's gonna go with everything that I have used or am currently using or have reviewed in the past. So I've got everything from Coinbase, Coinbase Pro, 
to my two favorites now, which is Celsius and Voyager, which is like my one-two punch. Voyager is what I use to dollar cost average in. Uh, it is commission-free trading. It works flawlessly, it's very easy. And then Celsius I use to gain interest. And what's great about this uh, spreadsheet is that when you, I mean, you can look up everything as far as uh, the rates, the buying fees, exchange fees, selling fees, conversions, uh, how much you'll get as far as uh, for the interest. So uh, just take a look at that. And again, it goes over everything, uh, Gemini, Gemini Pro, Uphold, Abra, Simple Swap, Uniswap, Kraken, Cash Epi, Toro, don't recommend that at all. And then an evaluation for crypto.com. And at the top is uh, there are affiliate links. You do not have to use those affiliate links. You can go right to Coinbase and sign up. You can go right to Voyager and sign up. But if you use the affiliate links, uh, it can give you anywhere from 10 to $25, depending on what you sign up for. So again, I cannot stress this enough. Just make sure you have as many on-ramps, meaning uh, the place where you actually buy the cryptocurrency, and off-ramps where you can actually sell it uh, when the bull run comes. Okay, so we know that. Let's get into uh, Coinbase and Coinbase Pro on limit orders. If you have a Coinbase account, you're gonna go, if you have a Coinbase account, you have a Coinbase Pro account. All you have to do is log into Coinbase, and then once you go to Coinbase Pro and you just hit on sign up, or sorry, log in, it'll say, well, it'll, it'll do some type of uh, cross login type of procedure, and you'll be on, in Coinbase Pro. Works out pretty well. Everybody's happy, fantastic. And the reason why we have to use Coinbase Pro is because, well, first of all, uh, transferring funds between the two, there's no fee. And second of all, you can do this thing called a market stop and limit orders. You cannot do that on Coinbase regular. Now you can buy any type of uh, digital asset, cryptocurrency week by week on Coinbase or Coinbase Pro, doesn't matter. But, there, but you can't do automatic sell orders. And this is the, the magic piece, the missing piece that you have to do. And as much as I even talked about it, I just did this today before I made this video. So yeah, you need to have this in place so you know that you can pull the trigger. Now, if you do that, that means you have to leave um, your digital currency, your cryptocurrency on an exchange. And I thought you said not to do that. True, I did. So you have to weigh the risks right now. Like if I had 30,000, I'm not going to put 30,000 onto an exchange. What I'm going to do is for those two uh, exit points. So I need 1500 and 2850. So about 5,000 XRP. I'm going to take that and put it on the exchange. If you, f it's up to you. You can put all your XRP or all your Bitcoin or all your tomato coin on, on the exchanges and just wait for those numbers to hit, but at least, at least do two or three different price points. So you're not going, eh, I'll sell everything when it gets to, you know, 20X. Hint, hint, that's not gonna happen. So, so we're gonna log in, great. We're gonna go to our pro account. And if you notice here, uh, XRP, there's nothing, right? But, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna deposit it from my Coinbase account. And there's two different options here. So first you're gonna select the currency, and let's just pick XRP. Two different options, crypto deposit or a Coinbase account. I'm gonna click on that. And in my wallet, I got X amount. So let's see, I wanna take whatever I wanna take. Let's see, what was the first one? 1,500. Okay, so I got, I wanna take 1,500 XRP, which is roughly $316 as of today. And I'm going to deposit 1500 XRP into my Coinbase Pro account from my Coinbase account. Super simple. Let's see how fast it is. Deposit. Your transaction on the way should arrive in about 10 seconds. Fantastic. Let's dismiss and let's see. And there it goes. So it took two seconds. I'm going to let that one slide. I'm going to let that slide. So I got 1500. I'm going to put a sell order in. Not a market. A limit there's market limit and stop we'll go over the differences in a bit so I'm gonna put in 1500 XRP and the price I want to sell it at is three dollars and twenty cents so there's gonna be a fee of 24 bucks that's a bummer but I'm gonna make four thousand seven hundred seventy six dollars I think I'll be okay oh 318 oh, excuse me it was 318 my bad 318 so I'm gonna make this I'm gonna make this I'm gonna place the sell order and done 
success. That is in the system. I don't have to worry about it. I'm done. I can put another order and I'm off the books. I'm good to go. So that's the secret sauce. That's the missing piece. And real quick, let's go over what those different terms are. So a view, overview of order types. There's a market order, which will execute immediately at the current market price. We're not going to do that. A stop order lets you specify the price at which the order should be executed and is useful for stop loss and similar strategies. Or a limit order, which we just did, lets you set your own price as well as set some advanced order execution options. And there's different things like that, but as you can see how easy it is. I don't want to get into the weeds. Uh, just do it like that and it should be okay. 